his physical mannerisms are aggressive. So, and, and I am concerned about it. I feel threatened by him. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Marjorie Taylor Greene channeled her inner Central Park Karen today when referring to her own colleague, Jamal Bowman. And the reason why he gets under her skin so much, I think, is because he gives her a taste of her own medicine and she can't take it. See, she's someone who likes to be rude and confrontational to her own colleagues. Cori Bush had to move offices when she was first elected because of Marjorie Taylor Greene's confrontational behavior. But yet when somebody does that to her, all of a sudden she feels threatened. See, she can dish it but she can't take it. So let's listen to her remarks and then I will provide you with the context to demonstrate how she is lying about Jamal Bowman. I had to have so much security, there was not enough. I was swarmed, it's all on video, everyone can see this. But I will tell you what's on video, is Jamal Bowman shouting at the top of his lungs, cursing, calling me a horrible, calling me a white supremacist, which I take great offense to, that is like calling a person of color the N-word, which should never happen. Calling me a white supremacist is equal to that, and that is wrong. Jamal Bowman was down there cursing at me, telling me to get the F out of there, and he was leading the mob right outside the vehicle I was sitting in. We have this all on video. And then at, on the Capitol steps yesterday, he was the one that approached me. Even CNN reported that. Yelling, shouting, raising his voice. He has aggressive... Uh, his physical mannerisms are aggressive, and he just recently uh, shoved Thomas Massey um, at just outside the House chamber. I think there's a lot of concern about Jamal Bowman, So, and, and I am concerned about it. I feel threatened by him. Um, he not only led a bob, mob there, but his boisterous lies, and I'll tell you another thing he said outside there. He was saying, save your party. I kept telling him, no, save the country. It's not about political parties. We shouldn't care about political parties. We should care about the country because no matter what our political beliefs are, Jamal Bowman, I don't know what his political beliefs are. I know what mine are, but we both, we both swore an oath to serve the country here in Congress as representatives. So I, I am very concerned about Jamal Bowman and he's someone that people should watch. Oh, are you Marjorie? See, she's invoking racist tropes about black men being threatening and aggressive to describe her own colleague, yet don't you dare call her a white supremacist. She is unbelievable. Now, we're going to watch the clip where she claims that his physical mannerisms were aggressive, and you're going to see that that clearly wasn't the case. But first, I've got to address the dumbest thing that she said. She actually said with a straight face that calling her a white supremacist is like calling a person of color the N-word. I don't even know how to respond to that, honestly. It's not even remotely comparable marjorie and i get that she's clueless and she lacks self-awareness but for her to say that is just it's so ridiculous she literally spoke at a white nationalist event hosted by neo-nazi nick fuentes and now she has the audacity to show us her surprised pikachu face when people correctly identify her as a white supremacist no, you are a white supremacist, Marjorie Taylor Greene, full stop. And it's not the allegation that you're a white supremacist that's offensive. It's your white supremacist beliefs that are offensive. Now, she's going to turn around and claim that pointing that out is tantamount to calling people of color a slur. I just, what do you even say? This is somebody with an immense amount of power who's that stupid. Now, let's get to the exchange where she claims that Jamal Bowman made her feel threatened because he was being aggressive. So this is what she was referring to that took place on the Capitol steps yesterday. Listen, no more QAnon. No more mad no more CNN. No more debt ceiling nonsense. <laughs> Come on you know now. What? Save you know the party. You know, we gotta save, save the America. Country. Save the fighting, children. Save the country. Do something about guns. Right. So close Come the border. Come on. Invest in close the border. Save the, the children. Is, the border is what the children. Trump left. Hey, what where are, are all the kids? About? Where are all the migrant what children? Kids? You guys We're have lost them. We're accepting them. We love no, them. No, you've lost them. We love the migrant children. What do you mean lost them? 
You can't find them. Wait, what That's you talking your about? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, migrant children are missing. You don't know the news. No, no, you don't know the news. Oh, you sadly listen before. That's hey, let me tell you listen, something, Jamal. Listen, I need you to save the party. Not very smart. You should pay attention. She ain't worth it, bro. Save the party. She ain't worth it, bro. She ain't worth it, bro. Yeah, so as she was pointing and yelling herself, she felt threatened. I mean, you were being as aggressive, if not more aggressive, than Jamal Bowman. Why shouldn't he feel threatened by you? If you feel threatened by him, I mean, did you see your guns? They're as big as Jamal Bowman's. This was an impromptu, playful debate. His mannerisms were very clearly not aggressive. He wasn't even angry, but yet she claims that he had a threatening demeanor. Okay, Karen, sure even if you yourself were yelling at him. It's just so ridiculous. Everyone can see that she's embellishing and she's lying, right? She knows what she's saying about a black man. She knows the stereotypes. She knows what she's doing. Now, she also referenced how he was yelling at her when uh, she was in New York protesting Trump's arrest. And keep in mind that she, on her own volition, traveled to a state that she does not represent to be purposefully antagonistic. She knew her presence would trigger counter protests, and it did. And yet, she had to leave because the crowd didn't like what she said. They were getting too rowdy. But yet, she conspicuously places all of the blame for the rowdy crowd on the big, scary black man. Let's watch. The crime should be held accountable. Congresswoman. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Did you know it's okay? Now let's talk about the truth. Now let's talk about the truth. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Now let's talk about the truth. Get her out of here. What inspired that today? Jamal Bowman. What inspired that today, Congressman? I was born and raised in New York City. This is the city that I love. It's a city focused on hard work and love for all people. We will never accept hateful rhetoric in our city. Any rhetoric that is divisive, any rhetoric that uplifts white supremacy, we are pushing back against that in all its forms. Marjorie Taylor Greene needs to take her ass back to Washington and do something about gun violence, do something about affordable housing, do something about childhood poverty, do something about climate change. Do your freaking job, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You don't need to be in New York City talking that nonsense. Go back to your district. You're not, what are you doing here? You're here for politics. You're here because you want to be VP. You're here for your own fundraising. You're here for your own nonsense. New York City stood up to Marjorie Taylor Greene to get today to let her know, get the hell out of here. Don't open one word in our freaking city. <gasps> oh my God, Jamal, did you just accuse her of using rhetoric that uplifts white supremacy? Didn't you hear that that's deeply offensive? Have you apologized to her? It's just so ridiculous. Now, we all just saw the video. And as you saw, after she was already in her car, that's when he yelled, now let's talk about the truth, get her out of here. And then he proceeded to talk about how much he loves his city and how she needs to focus on serving her own constituents. That's threatening. That put her in a dangerous position. Now, I'm not saying that it's absurd for her to feel intimidated by a large crowd because anyone would. There were a lot of counter protesters there, and that's why she left. But she's making it seem as if Jamal Bowman tried to sick the crowd on her when he did not. Now, you saw what he said, but let's go back to her claims about him because it'll become obvious that she lied. Jamal Bowman was down there cursing at me, telling me to get the F out of there. And he was leading the mob right outside the vehicle I was sitting in. We have this all on video. Right. We do have this on video, unfortunately for you. He said, get her out of here, not get her the F out of here. And the only curse word that he used was ass when he said that she needs to take her ass back to uh, Georgia. And in the video, he deliberately waited until she left before he started more explicitly criticizing her. But when you have the context, it's easy to see she is obviously embellishing. But let's talk about her claim that he shoved Thomas Massey as well. And I'm assuming that she was referring to this viral video where Jamal Bowman was shaming GOP politicians for failing to pass gun control after another mass shooting. And Thomas Massey chose to engage with Jamal Bowman on his own accord, but according to Marjorie Taylor Greene, Bowman shoved him. Well, let's see for ourselves. They're freaking cowards. They're gutless. They're not here. I'm talking about gun violence. You know, there's never been I'm talking about gun violence. In a school that allows teachers to carry. Oh my 
Carry guns? You think more guns lead to more death? More guns lead to more death. Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're carrying the water for the gun lobby. Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Good. States that have open carry laws have more death. States that have open carry laws have more death. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That, that's a, what, calm down. Children are dying. Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not harming teachers. Have you ever worked in a school? 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 It's a yes or no question. Have you ever worked in a school? You will not answer my question. Don't stop and talk to me. Okay, I'll bring it down and down. Have you ever worked in a school? I worked in a school for 20 years. I was a teacher. I was screaming before you came and interrupted me. I worked in a school for 20 years. I worked in a school for 20 years. I was a teacher. I was a school counselor. I was a middle school principal. I was in cafeteria protecting kids every day of my career. Clown, clown, he can't even answer a yes or no question. Answer, why won't they pass legislation? Why? Answer this question. Ask him right now. Make him answer. Now, you may be wondering, where was the shove? Right? I watched the video multiple times, and I didn't see it. In fact, Thomas Massey, to my knowledge, didn't accuse Jamal Bowman of shoving him. Neither did any of the multiple news outlets that covered this. Because if Jamal Bowman actually shoved Thomas Massey, that would be physical assault. That would be major headlines. But, I mean, maybe if we're trying to be extra charitable to Marjorie Taylor Greene here, she's referring to this moment. But even that is a stretch because he just gently put his hand on Thomas Massey. And if you call that a shove, I'm sorry, you're just deluded. But you also, if you think that's a shove, you also have to interpret this exchange between Bowman and Republican Byron Donalds as him hitting Byron Donalds. Because, I mean, if we're grasping at straws, then this should also constitute assault as well, according to Marjorie Taylor Greene. But conspicuously, Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't bring up that exchange. Hmm. It's as if Jamal Bowman can only be threatening to his white colleagues. Isn't that a little bit interesting? Don't you find it funny that she only brings up the interactions that Jamal Bowman has with her and Thomas Massey. Listen, we need to be very clear about Marjorie Taylor Greene. She is a white supremacist, and she knows what she's doing, as I stated earlier. She knows that by lying about how threatening and aggressive Jamal Bowman was being, she's perpetuating a very specific stereotype in the same way that Central Park Karen knew how police would respond if she lied and told them that there was an African-American man threatening her. It is common knowledge that policing in this country is deeply racist. And this has been used against black people by racist whites who know they can endanger their lives by simply portraying them in a particular way. It's how they exert power over black people. And Marjorie Greene invoking this racist trope is further proof that she is indeed a white supremacist, but don't you dare point that out. But don't take it from me because I'm a white person, right? Take it from somebody who knows about this lived experience. So I want to point you to an excellent medium piece written by G. Korea in 2021. It's titled, Why Do You Only See Me as Big, Black, and Scary? And he writes, Eradicating centuries-old racism is not only challenging, but can also seem unattainable. Even when with my black brothers and sisters, I can't shake the feeling of suspicious white side eyes forming judgments about a group of black people congregating, men in particular, and how they might perceive them as a threat. In the minds of many, this kind of gathering might as well be a gang ready to wreak havoc on unsuspecting white communities that the only intent is to cause destruction, crime, and unrest. It's the false and dangerous narrative that has lasted generations, a narrative that continues to oppress black people to this day. The anxiety and even terror that festers within some white people who learn early on to fear the other, who fear an angry black uprising that will take control and plot their demise, is kept alive by design. The idea of the terrifying black monster has been ingrained in so many people that it is difficult to shake off. Over the years, I've become more selective in my interactions. As my self-awareness blossomed and the need to compromise my integrity waned, I found that letting others define who I am is counterproductive. I am no longer driven by my reactions, but directed by self-assuredness. Knowing who you are and being aware of how others perceive you is paramount to self-preservation. Acceptance from others might not come, but confidence in yourself will. Now, I want to encourage you to read 
the entire piece because it is very good. But the moral of the story, I think, is that for centuries in this country, black Americans have had to be hyper aware of the way that they're perceived by white people in order to protect themselves, in order to not endanger their lives. They have consistently had to appeal to the sensibilities of white America to make sure that they're able to fit in. And they're conscious of how they might be perceived in crowds or if they raise their voices. But that time needs to end. And Jamal Bowman being a confident black man, that's offensive to someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene because to her, she probably feels like he should know his place. Not only is he part of a historically white and racist institution, but he is challenging his GOP colleagues and by default challenging white hegemony. And the way that racists like Marjorie Taylor Greene try to reexert control is to signal her discomfort because she expects him to shut up and be quiet. It's the oldest trick in the book. But in the age of the Internet, these tactics aren't as easy to hold up. And the reason why is because we can all see what's happening. We can see the way that folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene are being hyperbolic. We saw how the Central Park Karen was lying. And the reason why Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks that being called a white supremacist is literally tantamount to being called a slur is because the empowerment of marginalized groups feels like oppression to her. It feels like oppression to white supremacists. But at the end of the day, Jamal Bowman isn't the one who's the threat. Marjorie Taylor Greene is the threat. So she can try to embellish and claim that he was being really aggressive, but we're not buying it. We have the receipts. We see the videos. You're lying, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And it's just further proof that the rhetoric that you use is indeed uplifting white supremacy. So fuck off, Karen.